Hi there, Jay Tedeschi, Senior Technical Marketing Specialist with Autodesk here. Thanks for joining me for this look at Inventor Pro 2016 Sheet Metal Environment. We'll begin by opening up and porting a step file and immediately we'll begin to enter the sheet metal environment by using some new functionality in sheet metal environment that allows us to automatically define the sheet metal thickness based on the thickness of an imported or selected model. In this case, this is the imported data. So our sheet metal defaults are now set based on this imported component. Now, we also have at our disposal a two-dimensional AutoCAD DWG file, a layout of a new design for a uh, multi-component, multi-part sheet metal weldment. So we're going to utilize DWG Underlay, another new feature or technology in Inventor Pro 2016, and we'll utilize that to essentially grab and, utilize, and use uh, some of the existing DWG data as profiles for the, this multi-body sheet metal component that I'm about to construct. So with that data um, essentially pulled into this part, will then locate it relative to the rest of the geometry. So with it sitting right over the existing component that we pulled in, we now can begin by creating a sketch. Here you see our existing solid. Turn that off momentarily. Let's define a new sketch and we'll utilize the new projection, new projection technique which is called Project DWG Geometry. Uh, in this case we're going to project closed loops as well as single objects or lines and the, this is going to be the basis for our new body. Now from this existing projected geometry, keep in mind this is a live link to a DWG file so uh, any changes made to that DWG file that I projected this geometry from will automatically force an update here um, to the sketches that I've just created as projections of that DWG. Now you'll notice that I added a reference dimension uh, in Inventor's sketch environment. This is linked to the DWG underlay so again if that data changes it will change here as well. And we'll use that to drive the overall thickness of our new solid. So this is entirely new for 2016 and that is multi-bodies in the sheet metal environment. So let's define a new sketch. We're going to keep keep going here. And we will project that point. That will be our reference point. And we're going to use that for the loop that we've already projected. Let's go ahead and share or at the visibility of this sketch. Let's turn that on. We'll go ahead and edit that. And let's go ahead and copy now this sketch right here. And we're going to place that on the new sketch plane, Sketch 2, that we created on the face of our second solid. So let's turn the visibility of Sketch 1 off. Let's activate Sketch 2. And now we'll locate and place that sketch. So again, advantage here being that this layout, we're leveraging AutoCAD data that already exists. The layout was already done in AutoCAD. Uh, and not only are we using this geometry to drive the creation of these new parts, uh, it's a live link to those parts through the DWG underlay technology. So if anything ever changes on that DWG file, my components here, which are driven as a function of those, will change as well. So with a couple of commands, uh, notably a uh, Boolean intersection, we now have the overall shape of our second sheet metal component. Let's use some unfolding technology. We'll add all bends and unfold this. We'll define a new sketch and we'll go back and mine our DWG data once again. Let's turn the visibility of that on. We'll project DWG data from the underlay. Let's grab this closed loop. And now let's finish the sketch by uh, adding some lines onto this. So this will be uh, parallel to that existing line and collinear. This one's perpendicular and this terminates with a coincident constraint. We can then project the end of our existing unfolded geometry and add a reference dimension from the bottom there. Let's define this as 20 millimeters. Finally, 
let's turn off the visibility of our DWG file and add this as a sheet metal cut feature. We'll cut across bends. Beautiful. Let's add some corner rounds. Pick those two corners. This will be 10 millimeters. Let's add a chamfer. This is going to be chamfer by distance and angle, so we'll go back to the regular 3D modeling features to add this. We'll do 25 millimeters by 15 degrees. We'll select our reference face, select the two edges, and now let's go back to our sheet metal features because we'll add a couple more corner rounds. So let's pick each of those new corners. Perfect. 10 millimeters is fine. And now finally let's go back and refold this. Hopefully you're starting to see how quickly and easily we're able to com complete essentially uh, our multi-body sheet metal bracket. Now as I pointed out this is ultimately going to be a weldment so let's uh, go ahead and uh, make a, just a few changes here visually. Um, one of the things I like to do lately is utilize the uh, image-based lighting environments. We don't no longer have to have backgrounds turned on and by default several, several of them do not. So with that new environment active we'll go into our multi-body part and we will give uh, file names. So they're not file names right now but we'll call this uh, CH1190 and 1191 and when we use the make component functionality we're going to create a new IAM file and that IAM file will automatically have as its two components that make up the assembly the two the names that I just gave these as uh, solid bodies and as you can see these are listed as sheet metal components this this new multi-body environment in sheet metal is really really sweet I, I cannot stress that enough it just it cleans up the workflow so well let's go back to uh, grid light uh, image based lighting environment Go ahead and save this. These are all initial saves for all these components. And again, as I pointed out, this is going to be a weldment. So let's go ahead and convert into the weldment environment. So let's start by adding some fillet welds. We'll do a two millimeter weld first between this face here We'll pick those, all of those joined faces and the backing face right there. There's our first one. We'll continue, pick this bottom face, and we'll finally, we'll just move around our weldment, adding all of the appropriate welds to all of the faces that need to get. Last one. There, pick this face, apply, and we're done. Nice detail on the scalloping of the weld itself. Let's go ahead and save this. Return back up to the top. All right, next up, let's go back to our assembly and we're going to open up the subassembly that had our bent sheet metal component. And we're going to replace that now with the weldment that we just created. So there's the weldment. Go ahead and select that. Now this should functionally be much stiffer than that single bent piece that we were using. Uh, we also have the option of essentially um, utilizing some placed components as templates for uh, jump geometric changes. Again, we'll go into the assembly, we'll change to an image-based lighting environment, and let's utilize this uh, captive fastener. We'll go ahead and copy that, paste it in, and now we'll utilize um, essentially some assembly techniques here just to put this together. So we'll add a constraint. It's going to be an insert constraint here. Right there. Finally, let's do an angular constraint just to align the edges here. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and save this. back to the assembly 
all the updates complete. Let's go ahead and open up the sub and show you some some of the additional enhancements that were made to the sheet metal environment. So we'll start by opening up this component. I already have a sketch to find. We're going to use the face command and again this thickness was set way back when we started this whole thing based on an imported uh, component. Now let's turn the visibility of the sketch back on and we're going to add a bend line here. So we'll select this back face of my new sheet metal component. We'll project this edge and that edge is going to be our bend line. Turn the visibility of the sketch off. Let's finish the sketch. Let's go ahead to fold. So we'll pick the line. We'll flip the direction over for the portion of this sheet metal part that we want to bend. And we will add the fold angle. So 30 degrees. Very quickly and easily we're able to define that fold based on, again, that was an existing AutoCAD drawing that we used to define that sketch. Finally, let's take a look at the uh, zero radius uh, bends that are now capable in the sheet metal. Do our length of our flange, set our bend position, and instead of using the default bend radius, let's go ahead and set that to zero. That's been a huge request for quite a while. so. Hopefully you saw a lot of nice stuff here in Inventor Pro 2016 with regards to the sheet metal environment. We Im implemented a lot of requests this year. Uh, the multi-body environment, the zero radius bend, um, and we feel it's a really good, robust sheet metal tool now. Uh, hopefully you think the same. I want to thank you for your time, and I look forward to working with you again in the future. Thanks a lot.